Okay, um, hello everyone. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Okay, all right, so the very first program in chapter 6 is file display. All right, so assume that the file containing a series of integers is named numbers.txt and exists on the computer's disk. Write a program that displays all of the numbers in the file. All right, and and so over here it's saying, well, let me just maximize this for a second. All right, so it's saying we should assume that a file containing a series of integers is named numbers.txt. We should assume that it that that it, it exists, right? So let's um, this is very the, this is the very first program. So let's actually open up a text editor, right, and create that file, so we can so we can have it on our uh, on our computer because if we don't have any file then we wouldn't be able to display anything from any file right so let's create the file and let's write a program to display the contents of that file All right, so assume a file containing a series of integers is named numbers.txt so let's create numbers.txt on a Mac I'm going to use text edits because that's what I have right a text editor on Windows you can use notepad now with with the um, with, your, with your text editor especially with Mac by default, when you go to preferences, text editor, and go to sorry, text editor, and you go to preferences. By default, rich text is what's selected, and so when you try to save your text, it's going to save it in the form of RTF, which is rich text format. And what that what that means is, even though even if you type in your regular text, it's when you save it, it's going to be saved with extra um, characters that you don't necessarily see, and that will really affect your program when you try to read the content from it. So Make sure you change it to plain text, just completely plain text, and then you'll be fine. And then, you're, and then now you're just dealing with a text editor, like a, just a plain text editor. All right, so let's just create a, a, a bunch of numbers here. I'm just going to type in a bunch of numbers separated by uh, a, a, a return, like a line break. Okay, oops. Let's just do that. Okay, these are just random numbers I'm typing. It doesn't have to be. I'm just. We're just assuming that, right? It said, assume that a file containing a series of integers is named numbers.txt and exists on a computer's disk. So I'm creating this um, on our disk, on our computer. And I'm going to save it, right? I'm going to save it. I'm going to go to, basically, I'm going to save it where I'm going to save the program itself. And so I have a shortcut to the folder, which is um, Python. Um, we're in Chapter 6, so I'm going to create a new folder for that. Call it chapter six. Great. And this is the very first program, so I'm going to in the, in the chapter six folder, I'm going to create another folder. Call it file display. And then I'll save the file as numbers.txt. Okay. Numbers.txt. And so that file is saved there. All right. Let's okay. So now we have the file. We have the file, you know, uh, on our computer. All right. So since we just finished with chapter five and it's all about functions, let's create a function. Let's let's always, um, well, not not always. We we may we may just write programs sometimes without having it in a, in the main function. But for this one, let's just create it in the main function. And the main function basically is the f is the function is the first function that's called in in, in most programming languages is the first function that's called. And that function basically is your start, is your program, is your starting point. It's the function that calls every other function, and so you, you can make it. A, you should make it a habit to basically create the main function. But um, in Python, I know that if you don't create the main function, it will still work. But just make it a habit to create um, your, your program in a, in, a, in a main function and call the main function when you're done. So let's just do that so we can see it. All right. So define main. We're defining a main function. And then now we're going to start our program. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open the file in in read mode. Okay. Meaning we only we're going to open the file, and the only thing we can do to the file is read from it. So and so I'm going to use the, the function open. And we need to specify the open function takes in a couple of arguments. It takes in what file are you opening, right? The file we are opening, right, is saved in Python programming challenges chapter six. File display here, numbers.txt, the extensions.txt. If I get the information of this file, we can see that the extension is um, the txt. Well, what does it say? That <laughs> um, Yeah, name and extension right here, numbers.txt. 
And so it's hidden here. That's why it doesn't show. I should actually have it displayed because I like it. I like the extensions. So now don't hide it. Okay, good. And so now we can see the extensions. Extension is numbers.txt. And so we are opening the file numbers.txt, right? So we provide that argument in quotations, right? It can be single quotations or double quotations. I am used to double quotations, so I do that. And so numbers, it has to be exactly the, the name of the file, numbers.txt. And the next argument is what mode are you opening this file in? Now I'm opening this file in read mode, right? I could, that means I'm, I only want to read from it. I can't write to the file. I just want to read from the file. And so I surround the letter R with double quotations. It can be single quotations or double quotations. I'm using double quotations. So R stands for read, okay, read mode. Basically, I'm opening this numbers.txt file in read mode. Once I do that, this is a function. This function is going to return, right, the memory. It's going to return, the, basically, the memory address of of where this numbers.txt is stored in on our computer it's going to return it so we need a variable to to store that and so i'm going to create a variable okay i'm going to call it numbers file and then store the memory address that is returned from this open function in numbers file and so basically you have a numbers a, a file object here right this this variable is representing the 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 file object when when you do when you do this it creates basically a file object and this numbers this variable is going to represent that ob it's basically going to be our, our our file it's representing the memory address of where this uh, numbers the txt is stored and so now we are going to use this numbers file variable to represent the file all right so the next the the, the next thing we want to do is we, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read the very first line of the file, right? So, um, assuming that, assuming we had a file here, you know, assuming we didn't know how many lines were in this file, assuming this this file could have, uh, you know, could have had let's say a hundred lines or a million lines, right? You know, I mean, if you have only let's say three files, you can go in there, sorry, three lines, you can go open the file and say okay, and count it and say okay, I have one, two, three. And so you can you can either write a loop that iterates three times, or, or you could do that. But let's write the program in such a way that we don't have to know how many lines are in the file. Now I don't have to know how many lines are in the file. Okay, so let's let let's do that. So I'm going to call. Okay, I'm, I first of all want to read the very first line. I'm going to uh, write the write code in such a way that it's going to read this this file line by line. But I'm going to start by reading the very first line. And to read a line, to read the verb, to, to read a line in a file, you use the met the function read line. And so, since this represents our file, we um, file okay, we file object. We want to use it, right? And the file object has method um, has methods, right? Has methods that um, we you know methods that allow us to operate on the file or do things to the file, okay? And so. I'm going to call one of the methods of this file object. Okay, when you call open function, it creates a file object, and this numbers file variable is going to represent that file object. In other words, this numbers file variable is representing the memory address of that file, and a file object has methods. Okay, basically, methods are functions that belong to an object, and so they have methods or functions, pretty much the same thing. That allow us to do stuff, to you know, you know, to the file, to the file itself. And so one of the me methods is read line. Since we open it in, re in re read read mode, right? We want to read. We want we can read a single line from it. One of the methods is read line. Okay, it's not camel case. It's a lowercase l. Okay, normally you think it's an it's camel case. You think it's an uppercase l. Well, it's a lowercase l, and it's a method. Numbers file or read line. Okay, it's going to read the very first line of the file and then move the read position to the beginning of the next line and wait for you to call read line again to read that second line, right? So as soon as you call read line, okay, anytime you create a file, the read position is going to be at the very first beginning, like the, like the very first, it's going to be before the very first line of the file. As soon as you call read line, it reads that line and then the read position moves to the beginning of the next line and waits for you until you call read line again. Right? So 
as soon as we call read line over here, the, the read position will, will, will move to the next the beginning of the next line and wait for us. And so numbers file the read line is going to read the very first line of the file, right? And so we, we need it stored in a variable, right? I'm going to create a variable called line and store it in there. So this is going to represent our very first line. Now, as you keep on reading the lines, right? If you read a, if you read a line from a file, right? And it returns something. That means I mean that means the file contains contains something, right? It means the file contains something. But if you read a line from a file, and it returns an empty string, that means you've reached the end of the file. Okay. Anytime you call, anytime you try to read a line from a file and it returns an empty string, it means that you've read all the lines in the file and it's reached the end of the file. And so, let's use a, a loop, right? To basically keep on reading lines from the file okay and and let's make sure that whatever anytime we read a line let's make sure that that you know that line is not as is not an empty string because if it's an empty string then that that means that we've reached the end of the line so let me just create a while loop here i'm going to fill at the very first time i, I read the very first line <coughs> sorry the very first line of the file and i say while line okay is not equal to the exclamation sign means not okay so this means while line is not equal to an empty string two double quotations or two single quotations this is an empty string it, it this is a space right but this is an empty string okay and this is what's returned an empty string is what's returned when um, you you call the read line and it you know basically when you call the read line method and it returns an empty string that means you've reached the end of the file that means that's it, you're done. There, there are no more lines and if you the end of the file. And so I'm saying, well, anytime we read, assuming, assuming there's nothing in this file, assuming it's like this file, this, sorry, this is empty. Assuming it's empty, all, this, all these numbers are gone. When we call the read line method to read the very first line, it's going to return an empty string. And this tells us that we've reached the end of the file. There's, uh, there's nothing in this. And so we want to check. We, we read the very first line, we check. While line is not equal to an empty string, if it's not equal to an empty string, then it means there's, you know, we're, we're able to get content. And so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and print that content, right? Because line is going to is going to store that content. We are reading the first line, storing it here, checking to see if it's not empty, all right? If it's not empty, then it means it has something. And so let's go ahead and print that something, store it in line. Right. 